Hello everyone. Today's book of the day is Knots in My Laces, Knots in My Tummy, written by Julene Butler. Knots in My Laces, Knots in My Tummy has been created especially for children to illustrate various symptoms of anxiety and help them identify how these might be expressed in various situations. This book is a useful resource for parents and caregivers, providing an accessible tool to start the conversation around what their child is feeling and how they can help. Helping children recognize their anxiety is often the first step toward managing symptoms and healing. After the book reading, and after the mindfulness segment where we do breathing exercises and introduce yoga, I will post this page, which provides more information about anxiety, a glossary, and a parental help guide. I hope that you use these resources. In the morning, when it's time to go to school, my tummy always hurts. It feels like knots in my tummy just like the knots in my laces. I love to paint pictures at school, but I hate getting things on my hands because that makes them dirty. When I go outside for recess, I don't like to play with the other kids. I always stay by myself until the bell rings. When I sit on the carpet for story time, I like to look around. I hear noises in the hallway, birds flying by the window, and the clock ticking back and forth. Tick tock, tick tock. Sometimes I even forget that it's story time. I never want my mommy to leave. When she drops me off at the babysitter's house, I cry and cry and cry because I'm so worried when we are apart. Sometimes when I feel tired, I get really angry and yell at my brother. I put my hands over my ears when my dad turns on the vacuum. Daddy, it's too loud. I feel scared when my family wants me to meet new people. I hide in my closet and hope they don't see me. At bedtime, mommy tucks me in. She says prayers with me and kisses me goodnight, but I still can't fall asleep. Ugh, I toss and turn all night. In bed, I keep my favorite nightlight on all night. I am afraid of the dark because the shadows look like monsters. I cry for mommy when scary dreams wake me up at night. Do you ever feel knots in your tummy, like the knots in your laces? Sometimes we get knots in our shoelaces that we can't untie on our own. Some children get tummy aches that feel like those knots, especially if they are really worried about something. If you ever feel this way, please tell your mom or daddy and they'll know what to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book and I agree. If you ever feel like the little boy in the book may be sad or anxious or angry, then you should really talk to an adult because they can really help. You can also try some breathing exercises. Sometimes when we experience feelings like being anxious or sad or angry or tired and it causes us to yell or cry, we can try to calm ourselves down by breathing. If we breathe deeply, we can calm down our mind and we can calm down our body. Do you want to try some deep breathing exercises with me? Yeah, come on. I'm so excited to teach these to you. So. You can start by pretending that you're a blowfish and you want to blow yourself up really, really, really big. So we're going to inhale to the count of six. We're going to hold it on the count of two. And then we're going to exhale on the count of eight. Are you ready? Okay. 
pretend like you are blowing up yourself as a big blowfish. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How did that feel? Great, let's try it one more time. So remember, you want to inhale nice and deep, like you're trying to blow yourself up like a big blowfish. And so remember, we're counting. So when I say one, you should start your breath. And by the time I get to six, you should be one big blowfish. Same thing with your exhale. You should start exhaling when I start counting at one. And then by the time I get to eight, you should be finished exhaling. Let's try that again. Inhale, nice, deep, and slow. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, how did that deep breathing exercise feel? Yeah, so when you are feeling some of these big emotions, if you're feeling anxious or if you're feeling sad, angry, like you want to yell or you want to cry, and maybe you feel like you can't control things, what you can control is your breath. In these moments when you're experiencing these big feelings, you may also start to feel yourself breathing like this. <laughs> right you're taking really short breaths and that's not going to help you so if you recognize yourself taking short breaths then you should stop and try to do a deep breathing exercise and you can remember it like this six two eight inhale to the count of six hold for two then exhale to the count of eight try that next time you feel one of these big emotions and see if it makes a difference. Practicing yoga is another way to help with anxiety and other big feelings. And you can start out really simple. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, you do a really nice big stretch anyway, right? Well, think of yoga as your morning stretch. You can develop a morning routine dedicated to mindfulness. So when you first wake up, you can sit up, take some nice, big deep breaths like we just practiced and then when you hop out of bed you're standing right well you can try this pose you stand up tall inhale raise your hands over your head exhale falling forward fingertips to your toes i'm sure that will feel awesome in the morning you can try to do that about two or three times and you can stop right there. You've done your breathing, you've done a little bit of stretching or yoga for the day, but if it feels really good, then you should continue. My favorite yoga pose is child's pose. I'll show you how to do it. So sit on your heels, fall forward, pressing your forehead into the ground, and then slide the palms of your hand forward. That gives you a nice big stretch. While you're there, you can try some deep breathing exercises. You can do the breathing exercises that we just practiced where you inhale on the count of six, hold for two, and then exhale on the count of eight. This is one of my favorite yoga poses. So if you're thinking about getting into yoga, you should definitely add this pose to one of your yoga routines. You can also try other fun poses like downward facing dog or butterfly pose. It may also be fun to pretend like you're an animal and try cat cow pose. And remember, through all of these yoga poses or yoga routines or yoga flows, we breathe. There are tons of yoga poses. And if you want to learn more about yoga, tune in to some of my Yoga for Kids videos. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. I really hope that you incorporate breathing exercises or yoga into some of your daily routines. You can try adding it in the morning or adding it at night. Remember, just start off simple. Sit up when you wake up, do some nice deep breathing, give yourself a nice big stretch like we practiced, you hop out of bed, hands high over your head, 
fall forward to your toes. Do that a few times and start there and see if it makes a difference. Thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Okay, adults, as promised, I'm circling back to all of the information this author has provided in regards to starting the conversation with your child about having anxiety. So I want to start with this page about anxiety. Anxiety is becoming more prevalent among younger children, even those as young as five years old. Studies show that one in eight children today have some type of anxiety disorder, exhibiting a wide variety of symptoms that range from excessive worrying to sudden panic. Unfortunately, it is challenging to identify anxiety in younger children because they cannot yet recognize and clearly articulate the symptoms they are experiencing. While anxiety is a normal reaction to stressful events and situations, an anxiety disorder can disrupt a child's day-to-day -day life. Anxiety disorders come in various forms, including generalized anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, social anxiety disorder, separation anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, selective mutism, and panic disorder. Although many signs and symptoms are similar, only a psychologist or psychiatrist can help diagnose the above-mentioned disorders. The author also includes a glossary and a parental help guide of commonly asked questions like, is anxiety normal? When is anxiety a problem? And what should I do if my child is exhibiting symptoms of anxiety? I hope that you use the resources that this author has provided. I think this is a wonderful book and a wonderful conversation starter. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.